Hello, everyone. It's time for Vanish Goggle and Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode 369, season 15. Today's date is uh, October 6, 2024, and welcome to the show. On today's program, I'm going to talk about... Uh, Let's see, I, I forgot. <laughs> I slipped my mind. Oh, yes. I'll talk about uh, that documentary uh, series, uh, Chicago Stories, that aired on WTTW TV Channel 11 in Chicago. Uh, they aired an episode called Amusement Parks. And I'll talk about, and I saw it yesterday, in the, yesterday morning, that is, and I'll give you what I thought about the program and what, what they talked about. Also, I'll talk about the WLS Magic Bus that uh, used to be around in the 1970s, and I'll talk about my memories of that. So right now, we're going to go into a commercial break, and this program is brought to you by Legs Pantyhose. <laughs> oh, that was a that that product was a very unusual and uh, very useful. And here's a commercial from 1972, and I remember the slogan they had, and I'll explain that when I get back. So, just sit back and relax, and I'll be right back with the program, folks. Thank you. Legs, legs, legs are here. Legs, the new super stretch docky and patty hose you'll buy right in your supermarket at the Legs Boutique. Our legs fit your legs, they hug you, they hold you, they never let you go. Baggy knees are out, definitely out. Our legs fit your legs, they hug you, they hold you, they never let you go. They did it, they got rid of the wrinkles around my ankles. Our legs fit your legs, they hug you, they hold you, they never let you go. Ooh, they fit, all of me. Rather do that. Our legs fit your legs. Get your first pair of legs at the Legs Boutique today. Stockings, 89 cents. Regular and all sheer pantyhose from $1.39. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Legs Pantyhose. Um, I'm trying to think how the slogan goes. I'm trying to remember. Our legs is your legs. I think that's how it goes. They 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 hold and they hug you. I don't know. <laughs> they never let you go. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, yeah, I remember it from the 70s. And uh, I remember uh, my memories of that. We used to see the, um, what is that called? Uh, the display of that. And they had them all lined up, you know, and it's shaped like an oblong egg. And they had all the different colors and the sizes. And it looked very pretty to me. Uh, so I used to see them at the drugstores uh, in Jewel. Uh, I remember in Turnstile, they had those. Uh, so let's see. Um, anyway. Let's see what I was going to say. Oh, okay. So um, it was introduced in 1969, and it ended about early 1980s, like 82 or something like that. No, I think earlier than that, later than that. I'm going to double check, and I'll tell you. Let's see what we got here. Um, I got the information right here. Okay, and... Uh, Yeah, around uh, about yeah about early '90s or something like that, or I don't know. Anyway, well that's okay. So uh, they changed the packaging, and then you know these days a lot of women don't wear pantyhose; they wear slacks, and you know, so it's um, because it's a bother. It really does. My mother still wears pantyhose, but not legs, <laughs> not those. Okay, so um, anyway. 
So uh, two funny TV references uh, that I remember from this product. One was uh, from Sanford and Son, uh, where Red, Fred Sanford, played by Red Fox, used to you know, used to sing that song, Our legs is your leg, they they hold and they held you, they never let you go, and he did that. And then there was another uh, show that was from the Norman Lear show, and then there was another one from One Day at a Time where Ann Romano, played by Bonnie Franklin, had a really bad day, came home and said, oh, and then when I went to uh, the store and I wanted my pantyhose and I came home with an empty egg. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> a lot of people knew what she was talking about. Yeah, they knew. I don't think she married, mentioned a pantyhose. She mentioned I came home with an empty egg, you know, and uh, either it was stolen or... They didn't package it and uh, didn't put anything in it or something like that. But I, I remember those. They were from the 70s. My God, like that. And one last thing about legs. Uh, they had spokeswomen about, uh, that did the commercials. One was Joyce DeWitt from Three's Company. Uh, the other one was uh, Barbara Eden from White Jerry Magini, Lonnie Anderson, uh, from WKRP in Cincinnati. Also, uh, actress Julia Prowse. She's from the mo old movies. You know, she did that. I think it was someone else, and I can't think of it. That's okay. All right, that's enough of the legs. <laughs> uh, so, uh, at the beginning of the program, I mentioned I'm going to talk about uh, the program for the, the, on Chicago Stories that aired on WTTW Channel 11 in Chicago that dealt with the amusement parks. And also I'll talk about the WLS Magic Bus. I'll talk about my memories of that. Before I get started, I want to mention one, uh, maybe a couple things. Well, we'll see. Uh, last Friday was, was my birthday. Uh, I turned 61. I uh, got a lot of wonderful greetings and birthday wishes from my friends, my family my followers and it was beautiful you know I'm, I'm very touched i almost cried i mean it's uh, i'm so loved like that because they love the page you know they love the count and all that and also people from the media that contacted me so that's that's awesome it really does it really is you know because they really care about uh, my well-being my health and all that um so my mom baked the cake uh, vanilla cake, unfrosted. Got to watch those calories. <laughs> anyway, and we she made a nice dinner um, last night, and that was good. Uh, so it's a great birthday weekend. I really enjoyed it, and people are still greeting me, happy birthday, which is fine, you know, like that. But it's over, you know. I got to move on. Wait till next year, twenty twenty five, like that, and. Uh, you know, it's uh, not getting older. I'm getting better, you know, because I pray to God every day that I'm here to entertain you, to make you happy, to make uh, life happy and easy, you know, by posting stuff on Van Chicagoland, finding, finding things to post, you know, mostly obscure, obscure stuff, and, of course, doing the podcast. Yeah, so... Uh, maybe do some video. I have done some videos. I haven't done one in a long time. I will soon, you know, I talked about doing the Ray Rayner one. Uh, I don't know when that'll be. Uh, so when I find time, uh, this week has been crazy. This week is going to be crazy. I won't have time for that. Um, so I'm very blessed and thank you very much for that. Okay. Right now we're going to talk about uh, that episode of Chicago Stories on uh, on PBS, WTTW, Channel 11 in Chicago. I watched it last night. It was pretty good. I loved it. They showed uh, the amusement parks mostly that are gone. Uh, the, the one that they focus on a lot was Riverview Park because, you know, that was huge and memorable. And... Uh, a lot of people haven't forgotten it, and uh, they talk about the first ones, uh, of course, like White City. One of the what, the first ones, White City, that was on the south side at 63rd, like a little north of 63rd Street in Stony Island. 
and uh, Saint Sushi. That was another one that's nearby, but they closed it down like that. They also mentioned Adventureland, Old Chicago, uh, Kitty Town. Uh, I think there was a Kitty Town up north, but they talked about Kitty Town on the south side at 90, 95th Street in Stony Alley, which which was from Kitty Town to Fun Town. And when I was little, uh, you know, I was in grammar school. The school bus picked us up, you know, from school to take us home. And we used to drive, I used to drive on Stony Island Avenue. And we used to see that music park on the corner like that. And they would look, I, and I'm asking myself, and I ask people, what is this place? That looks awesome. It looks great. Uh, they don't know. <laughs> they didn't know. And uh, I was going to ask the bus driver about it. I didn't want to bother him. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, so I figured out later on it was Fun Town, you know, and it opened about 1959 to like early 80s. Um, now it's a shopping center. It's a big shopping center like that. Uh, one of the things I remember on the bus, this is from the kids that I went to school with at Correas. They remember the bump. The bump was when you when we drove past 95th Street. Uh, there was like a bump. It was like a as a street, and go boom, <laughs> and we just like a lot of kids hid in the back of the bus, and they just you know waited for the bump, and they jump up and down. Nobody got hurt. Like that. I never did this, but it was hilarious. I was inter we were entertained every day by that. So a lot of kids from from my class and older, eh, some younger, remember that. Anyway. So they touched on Riverview Park, and that opened July July 2nd or July 3rd, 1904. And it was the Sharpshooters uh, shooting range like that. And uh, it was like a, a shooting range, you know, a target range like that. And the men will go and practice shooting, and then the, and their wives or their girlfriends or their children or what have you were at the picnic tables, just eating lunch and just talking like that. And the guy who owned it uh, was wondering, why don't we find something for them to do besides just sit? So I think the owner's son, uh, George Schmidt, could be him. I'm not sure. I, I get that mixed up. <laughs> he went to Tivoli Gardens in Co Copenhagen and got a brainstorm and said, why don't we bring an amusement park here? There's plenty of room. The property's huge. His father said, yeah, okay, we'll do that. So he brought in a Ferris wheel, I believe, uh, some attractions, of course, roller coasters. Uh, they had about ooh, a dozen of them, a lot of them, as the years pass on. Um, then uh, so uh, they keep adding them, then they kept uh, removing them as the years come out. And so it opened, you know, that until 1967, and that was the last year. And they started to dismantle them, they au auctioned them off. Some went to Adventureland, some went to Kitty Land, and uh, some went elsewhere in the United States. I know the carousel is at Six Flags Great America in Atlanta. One day I'd like to go there and see it. As soon as the hurricane season is over. <laughs> That's terrible. Anyway, um, so more parks open, you know, besides Riverview. Um, of course, the, like the ones I mentioned. And uh, right now there's only two. Uh, there's, uh, for example, there's uh, Santa's Village. And uh, in, it's in, what is it, West Dundee or East Dundee? I get that mixed up. And the other one is, of course, Six Flags Great America in Gurney, Illinois. And I went there a couple of months ago. I did, uh, you know, this is for kind of research for my latest podcast. And I, I went alone and uh, it was very warm that day, very crowded. Not very crowded. It got crowded later. Uh, I had a hard time finding my car after that. It was a, that's a huge parking lot. <laughs> Try to remember next time. Maybe I'll take a phone, use my phone. Anyway, uh, I went I went uh, browsing, uh, you know, took a tour and then took some pictures and, uh, you know, got familiar and familiarized with the park. I've been there twice. 
once was in high school and I took, I rode the demon and it was not called Six Flags. It was called Marriott's Great America. Later on, I changed that. And then I rode the demon again in 1998, 99. And that was it for my roller coasters. That's it. I had to take my glasses off. I didn't want to, you know, have my eyes closed barely, you know, most of the time. I'm so, I'm so, I'm such a wuss. <laughs> so, um, Oh, as if I ride one now, no. But when I was there, I rode the new f- ride. I forgot the name of it. It's called. It's like a pendulum. That was cool. I like that. But I, I was scared. And I asked somebody to take, hold on to my glasses. A very nice, a very nice lady. It was fun. And that was it. I stayed there for about a few hours, and then I left. Yeah, I might go again. Uh, I don't know about this year. They have fright fest now. Maybe next year. We'll see. So uh, I did watch the program, back to the program, that is. Uh, it was a very good, well-produced uh, show. And according to social media, they loved it, you know, and uh, I hope they do a sequel. That'd be great. You know, but they touched Riverview, and uh, everyone had memories of that place, you know, with the the pricing, the attractions, the rides, Oh, you can like the Greyhound, the the Bobs. Uh, that roller coaster was a classic. It was introduced in 1924, and then it went all the way to the end. Then they introduced the Fireball, um, the Flying Turns. You name it, they, it was great. It was wonderful. And uh, so, I I like roller coasters in a way, but I wouldn't ride them now because uh, I don't have a stomach for it and I'm a little old. So, uh, says my doctor won't let me. (laughs) I asked him that. Can I ride a roller coaster? He says, no, don't do that. (laughs) All right, fine, I won't do it. (laughs) Anyway, so that was, like I said, it was a good show. I enjoyed it very much. And uh, and I showed, uh, so... It was repeated last night at six o'clock. I don't know when it's going to repeat it again. You have to check this on the website for uh, Channel 11. Maybe it'll show it again. I hope so. I think it will. I think it will. And if you miss it, yeah, try to catch it. Watch it. I I believe you'll love it. I really do. I had to remind a few people who ride roller coasters, who are big fans, you know, like, for example, uh, Marcus LeShock. Who's on Channel 9? I told him, watch this show. I hope he watched it. I don't know if he did. <laughs> I have to remind him of a lot of things, but that's okay. Uh, I hope he enjoyed it. I hope so. He didn't say anything. Anyway, so uh, that's it for that. Uh, when I come back, I'm going to talk about my memories of the WLS Magic Bus. Okay, and so I'm going to take a quick break. And I'll be right back, folks. Thank you. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I took a quick break. Uh, Now we're going to talk about the WLS Magic Bus. Uh, That was from the radio station, WLS AM 890 or 95 FM. Uh, I think it was 890. Uh, That's what I listened to when I was a kid in the 1970s. I remember seeing this bus. It's like a van, a uh, Chevy van, I guess, like Sammy John's song, in my Chevy van. <laughs> anyway, um, so I used to see this bus, or, you know, when I was a kid. Uh, I don't know. I saw it once when I think this, when the school, my grammar school had a picnic, uh, I think Dan Ryan Woods, I could be wrong, or someplace, uh, somewhere where there was a wooded area. And I saw the bus somewhere, and they were giving out uh, gifts, you know, prizes and all that. So, I, you know, I did a little research on it, and uh, they did give out uh, bunker, bumper stickers, buttons, uh, T-shirts, surveys um what else they gave out oh lots of things lots of things 
like that. And whoever was driving the bus, it must have been people that worked at the station, maybe studio engineers or employees or maybe the DJs themselves. It could be, it could have been them, you know, like, for example, Bob Surratt, John Rickers Landecker. They're both on WGN radio uh, at present moment. Yeah, I think Bob Surratt's in the morning. Uh, John Landecker is in the evening. I, I listen to them from time to time. It's I love listening to those guys. They're they're awesome. I used to listen to them a lot on my uh, Toodle Loop radio from Panasonic. You know the round one. <laughs> anyway, uh, so and then uh, so the Magic Bus. Uh, I don't know when exactly they it started operating. Maybe in the mid '70s or something like that. Maybe the earlier, and it ended about in early '80s. I'm sure other radio stations did this. They, uh, like, I think that one of the first ones was WCFL. Excuse me. Um, then uh, probably WMET, and of course the Loop. FM 90, 97.9. I think they had some sort of vehicle like that. I think they did. I'm not sure. So, uh, you know, but the WLS Magic Bus stood out the most. And then, of course, uh, they used to advertise this bus on the radio. And uh, I remember they started playing the song, The Magic Bus from The Who. Yeah. Oh, oh, magic bus, doon, 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 you know, like that, <laughs> you know, so um, I like the song. It's kind of cool. And uh, so, oh, they also had book covers. I think I mentioned that. I'm not sure. Um, I remember the book covers from school. A lot of kids had that. And I was kind of jealous because I wanted to get one. And I always had, I always asked some kids, where did you get this? Where did you get these book covers? And they said, oh, no, I got it from the magic bus. Well, I don't know if they got them. If they want a contest from the radio station or they got it from someone they knew, I wanted that book cover, you know, so badly. It was so colorful. They showed uh, the Pepsi Cola thing and they showed uh, some of the recording artists at the time like that. Uh, you can find those on eBay if you do a search. They're there, you know, which is great. You know, I always want to own one, but. Uh, uh, so, can't they, so that was it was a fun time, you know, uh, listening to a radio in the 1970s, you know, with WLS. I enjoyed that very much. I really did. So, but the Magic Bus. So I posted a picture earlier of the Magic Bus that was at Comiskey Park, which is now Guarantee Field, and then it's like. Uh, so uh, someone re reached out to me and says, oh, that's my photo. And I said, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't, and it was your photo. Yeah, I should have answered them, but uh, I will when I get the chance. Anyway, so uh, that's nice. To the, that's a good memory when as a kid. It really was. Okay, so that's it for this show. It's kind of short. Uh I, uh, so I'll do a recap of what I talked about. I talked about, uh, of course, my birthday and also uh, the program, Amusement Parks, that aired on the television program, Chicago Stories, on WTTW-TV, Channel 11 in Chicago. And uh, they covered Riverview uh, pretty much. Also, I talk about my memories of the WLS Magic Bus in the 1970s. Uh, this podcast will be published later on uh, today. Yeah, it's almost a couple hours till midnight, but it'll be published. Uh, it'll be available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, also Breaker, Overcast. Uh, if you touch these apps, tap follow, you will get the latest episode. You'll receive a notification, and uh, you can listen to previous episodes that I recorded as you wish. Also be uh, on my blog, uh, blog. You can click on the link of those, uh, any episode you like, or the latest one. And uh, also be on my YouTube channel again and again and again. People always ask me, where do I find your podcast? Where do I find your podcast? You can find it on YouTube. Do a search. 
Fan of Chicago Land stories. You get the latest, and then it'll take you right there, and you get the latest episode. Tap, you know, take your mouse and tap subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. You can listen to that episode. You can listen to previous episodes if you wish. You know, if you have time, please do. Also, be sure to my social media accounts, uh, Facebook, X, LinkedIn, Reddit, uh, Blue Sky, Threads, Instagram, and TikTok. I think I got them all. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay. So, um... So that's it for the show, folks. Uh, this is Pico Sanchez, your host for Van Chicago and Stories of Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm recording in the evening. I've never done one in the evening. I always do it in the morning. But uh, something happened this morning, and uh, it, I don't want you know I don't want to go into it. It's just it was a mess. So everything turned out fine. I'll probably do another uh, episode uh, Tuesday. Most likely. We'll see. Okay. So uh, here's Bye Bye for me. And here's a little traveling music with Ray Rayner saying bye, bye, bye. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye.